what is going on people it's g you know what time it is you know what it is we are back in the building yes i have taken a little bit of a hiatus but i had to come back you know didn't think it was going to happen but liverpool have made a signing and again it is another midfielder added to the ranks and that is ryan gravenberch of bayern munich now Obviously, Liverpool getting in their fourth midfielder after the signings of uh, Spozzolai, McAllister and Endo. Um, so I think we can all sit here and say, you know, the midfield has finally been rebuilt. You know, a lot of people are extremely happy with that. Um, big news, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Ryan Gravenberch, decent player, you know. So I think it's it's one of those signings. It's one of those kind of signings. But, you know, before we get into, you know, all of that, before I give you guys my reaction, Make sure you smash that like button and make sure that you subscribe to the channel. If you guys haven't done so already, I won't be really diving into it. But if you haven't, please head over to my channel and watch my scout report on Ryan Gravenberch. And that's where I go into a lot more detail um, in regards to the type of player he is, you know, what he's done, you know, what the style of play is and all these kind of other various different things. But make sure you guys obviously head over there. And without further ado, we will start the show. Yes, 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 guys. I um, just thought I'd give you my quick reaction um, to the signing of Ryan Gravenberch from Bayern Munich, as posted out by probably one of two people that I will actually listen to or, you know, when they post something out on social media, I will obviously be checking that out ASAP. And that is Fabrizio Romano, Lionel Messi, himself in journalistic form. Um, official confirmed, Ryan Gavinberch joins Liverpool on a permanent deal from Bayern Munich. Uh, 40 million uh, euros plus 5 million package agreed five-year deal. Um, and this is obviously just a little quote from, I'm, uh, I'm assuming, Ryan Gravenberch. Uh, it's one of the biggest clubs in the world. Fans, the stadium, from the outside, it is top. So, obviously now Liverpool, you know, they've got their man. Um, from what we know, um, in regards to Ryan Gravenberch, uh, someone that Jurgen Klopp has liked for a little while. Um, you know, someone that uh, I'd say following, but, you know, clubs follow everybody, to be honest. But nonetheless, it is still a player that, you know, I think has been just on the radar, just been on the radar and obviously had a really poor season, you know, in terms of didn't really get a look at, you know, at Bayern Munich last season, you know, out of favour with two managers, you know, um, it's one of those kind of things, if, whether you take that, you know, as gospel or anything like that. But, you know, two managers obviously have come into the football club. They've not really fancied him. They've not really felt that he could come in and do a job, you know, for the team, whether that's, you know, because of tactically, stylistically, you know, the type of player that he is and, you know, all these other kind of like various different things. You know, there, there are probably other components and stuff like that. But I guess the main one is the sheer fact that, you know, he didn't really play much football, you know, last season. And I think when I'm looking at the signing as a whole, as I mentioned, I'm not going to go into too much like stats and um, in terms of like his style of play and stuff like that, um, guys, please head over to my channel, watch my scout report, you know, on Ryan Gravenberg. You'll find it there. Um, I go into a lot more detail, um, as I mentioned before. But yeah, I think you know he's a he's a he's a number eight. That that that's his that's his position. Um, just like Klopp um, loves, they can play multiple. Well, he can play in another position, you know, in defensive midfield. Um, and I think it's one of those weird signings because. You know, I'll even show you guys because, um, you know, you see a lot of people keep talking about it. You know, everyone keeps bringing it up, um, you know, and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But I'll show you guys here, you know, on the screen. Just wait for it to load up. So obviously this was the 
2022 Copa Trophy. Um, so basically the Golden Boy um, Awards. Um, I think they changed the name and it's named after a former player, but I can't remember. I think his name is Raymond Copper, something like that. I can't, I can't um, 100% remember. Someone in the comments will probably be able to let me know. But obviously, this was the final order. This is the 2022 version. Um, this one, I, I don't know how they actually done the Ballon d'Or previously. I'd have to actually look that up again, if anybody in the comments can actually let me know. But obviously, this award, as it says here, this uh, the award is voted on by 32 former Ballon d'Or winners. And then obviously here are the, the 10 uh, nominees in the final order after voting. Uh, the winner was obviously Gavi, probably much deserved at that moment in time. So this was in and around the 21-22 season. And, and obviously this was the top 10. So you guys can obviously see here fantastic players in there, you know, some real ballers. Probably every single one of them. Yeah, every single one of them, are, are, like I would be like, right, if we sign, you know, you, at, well, at that time anyway, you would have, if you had signed any of them, you would have thought, oh my goodness, you know, the, the, this is like another wonder kid, you know, potentially come in and do a job. And Ryan Grevenberch is on that list, you know, number seven, you know, um, ahead of Bakaya Saka at the time, Adiemi and Florian Verts. Um, and obviously ahead of him, you can see Vardio, Nuno Mendes, Jude Bellingham, Jamal Muziala, my favorite player, um, Eduardo Camavinga and Gavi, you know. It's it's a list. I promise you, like all ten. That that's a that's a dope list. That's a very very dope list. I'd have to run through like previous incarnations of this award, but in from what we know of these players now, looking looking at it, you know, in twenty twenty three, heading into the twenty uh, twenty twenty four, um, in a few months, when you're looking at it, you'd probably say this: the the ones who are, I mean, they're, they're all kind of on the right trajectory. To be honest with you, I'm, I'm just trying to. It's crazy. They're probably all on the right trajectory, probably apart from Gravenberch, to be totally honest with you. When you when you look at the list, maybe Nuno Mendes at PSG. Maybe I think those two, because obviously that move was a little bit weird. And we, you know, we, we kind of know what PSG are about at this moment in time. You don't really know, you know, in terms of they've tried a project, it's kind of failed. Now half that, you know, start by the team is kind of gone. You know, Messi's left, Neymar's left, obviously. Um, they don't really have those same star quality players, but they're going down a different route altogether. Gavi is Gavi, Barcelona. They won the league um, last season. Fantastic. You know, he, he's uh, top quality, top quality midfielder. Camavinga, again, fantastic player. Uh, won the Champions League, uh, beating Liverpool, obviously, that time. Again, versatile, can play left back, can obviously play in that midfield. Again, fantastic player. Muziala, as I mentioned, he's my favourite player on that list. The guy can do every single role, every single midfield and attacking role this guy can do. None of the other players in this list can do as many roles as he can do to the same level. Like defensive midfielder, got that in his lock, got that in his locker. Central midfield, got that in his locker. Attacking midfield, got that in his locker. Needing to play false nine, he's got that in his locker. Needing to play left wing, right wing, got that in his locker. You know, none of these other guys can do, in my personal opinion anyway can do that to the degree that he can do that at, you know, playing at such a high level. I think he's an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal player. And as I mentioned, he's my favourite player on the list. Obviously, Drew Bellingham making that move um, to Real Madrid. Um, Bellingham, he started like a house on fire this season, moving to the biggest club in world football. You know, he's looked at it like, I'm still playing at Dortmund. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Of, of course, it's still early, early on in the season, so... I, you don't want to get too overly gassed and stuff like that. But ultimately, yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to hold that L. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I was a bit uneasy with that move to, to Real Madrid, you know, in terms of, is he as good? Like, I know he's good, but is he as good as everyone keeps saying it? Are we just hyping it? He's showing me, man, at this current moment in time, you know. Um, and I, I ain't even ashamed to say it, man, because he's really showing at the moment. You move to the biggest club in world football and you're playing, like, obviously, it's still early in the season, so... He might go on a crazy gold drought. He might stink up the place in the next six months and we'll be having a different conversation. But right right, right now, yo, he's, he's really like uh, really doing well. Nuno Mendes, as I mentioned before, yeah, I, I just think that one's a little bit, eh, I don't know, man. I feel like that was the wrong move for him. If I'm being 100% honest with you, I would have preferred personally if he'd moved to somewhere else, a bit more competitive because he's a fantastic left back. Really, really good left back, you know. Um, and I just felt like it wasn't really the best of moves. Vardio, he's at Manchester City now. Yo, he's at, he's at the best team in the world right now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So what more can you say? Um, re done really, really well for Croatia, obviously, during the World Cup, helping them, you know, um, reach the stage that they reached. Um, 
fantastic centre back, absolutely fantastic. Can obviously slot in at left back if needed to, but yeah, it's going to be interesting watching him this season for Manchester City. And then you've got Gravenberg. Now, in that season that you know he was nominated, you know, playing for Ajax, really, really good season, you know, for him in that season. Um, he really showed everybody, like, you know, because obviously coming through, um, coming through that academy and stuff like that. We already know when it comes to Ajax and some of their players and stuff like that, you know, um, they, they it's like they're just born. It's like at Barcelona, it, they have this certain philosophy. So when you come through, you'll already have that embedded in you, i.e. you'll be comfortable on the ball. You'll be able to take on players. You know, you'll be comfortable under pressure. You'll be able to pick out a pass. And I'm just talking about the centre-backs. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Forget even when you move into midfield. Ryan Gravenberch was exactly like that. You know, he was really, really good um, at Ajax, you know, and he was really showing, you know, what he was all about. And when he made that move to Bayern Munich, I was a little bit like, hmm, I don't know, a bit of a weird one, but okay. <laughs> hey, if, if it, the, I think it was a really cheap deal. I can't 100% remember. I'm sure it was such a cheap deal at that time. And, you know, I was a little bit like, it's funny how no one else is kind of going in for him. And Bayern were a bit weird with their signings sometimes. Like, they just... Sometimes they'll buy like a lot of the same thing in terms of youngsters and, you know, Renato Sanchez, you know, type of guys. And I thought, mm, could it be one of those ones? It inevitably turned out to be like that kind of signing, you know, really, really, you know, unfortunate for him for whatever reason. You know, we can dress it up however we however we like, you know, for in by his own standards and, you know, for what we all projected for someone like a Ryan Gravenberch, you know, at that at that time, you know, especially coming seventh in this list. Yeah, a poor season, man. You, you know what I mean? He, he would definitely want to forget that season, you know, very, very quickly. But he's still young. So, you know what I mean? He's got the time to push through. And then you've got Saka doing his thing, you know, at that right wing position, you know, becoming easily one of the top three, at least in the top five. I can't think of top of my head, you know, um, right wing, probably even top three right wingers out there, to be honest, in the world, if I'm being um, um, honest. Uh, Adi Amy, obviously moving to Borussia Dortmund. Um, doing all of his work uh, was that for Salzburg? I want to say it was Salzburg. Yeah, Salzburg. And um, he's I love this player. You know, at the he's a fantastic, fantastic player. Can play all across that front three, um, front three positions. Um, electric pace. I think we I think we saw a game against Chelsea um, in the Champions League last season. We saw what he did to Enzo. You know, that was crazy. And that's just and that was I don't even feel like that was even him at his fastest. I feel like I've seen him move faster than that. Really, really good player. Has a good eye for a goal as well. You know, so and at Dortmund as well, almost helped them to win the league last season. So, you know, he's doing his thing, he's doing his thing. And then Florian Wirtz, who I, again, another, it's a lot of players based in Germany on this list, actually, might be telling for the future. Um, but Florian Wirtz as well, um, another good player by uh, by Leverkusen, obviously had that mad injury, you know, um, which kind of knocked him back a bit. But then he came back from that injury. And I think he had like a good little period, you know, after that injury, you know, where he was just really on form, whether it be scoring goals, getting assists. You know, and obviously now under Jabby Alonso, you know, again, going to be interesting, but I do like Florian Birch. I like everybody on the list, I'll be honest. Everyone, including Ryan Gravenberg, you know, favourites will probably be Muziala, uh, Saka, um, and it'd have to be Gavi, man. You know, I mean, I'm a Barca man at the end of the day, so it'll probably have to be Gavi. But the, all of the, the, the whole 10 on this list, you know, I wouldn't want to discredit, you know, any one of these players because, you know, they were they were really, really good players. And, you know, again, I'm showing that to kind of show like, you know, that was the kind of company that we saw, you know, Ryan Gravenberch in. You know, those are the kind of players, you know, all those up and coming wonder kids. Those are the kind of players that he was in and around. Of course, he's had that bad season. How he comes back this season, again, it's going to be super interesting. And also, I think mainly for me, and it's kind of moving on to, you know, my um, like my next point here. If we look at um, the amount of games, obviously, he played uh, for Ajax um, in that 21-22 season. If I just enlarge it for you guys now. Boom. So, you can see, you guys can obviously see, God, how many ads do you want to be added? Um, 34 games as central midfield, um, and then obviously eight games as a defensive midfielder. Got three assists, actually, um, in both positions. Uh, eight, three assists each in both positions. Um, two goals in central midfield and one as a defensive midfielder where he played eight times. 42 games in that season, three goals and six uh, assists um, and six yellows. Not really too fussed about that. You know, played a lot of games, played in a lot of games. If we take a look here at his injury history, just so you guys can kind of see everything. Again, I know there's going to be people who have already done this before, but 
we're here now, isn't it? Um, here we can see here the most he's missed was in that 21-22 season where he had an ankle injury. Um, he missed 10 matches. Um, I think most of those would have been for Holland, I want to say. Yeah, because it was May, so the end of the season. Um, till, uh, well, yeah, it was the end of the season, to be honest with you. Um, obviously, missed some days, coronavirus, bruised knee. So, you know, not, I wouldn't say anything. The ankle injury, I mean, if it flares up again, which is probably more than likely playing for Liverpool, then yeah, um, that would obviously be, you know, some level of a problem for him. But again, decent player, man, decent player. And I think even Bar Endo, all the players that Liverpool have signed, again, at the time of this video, it's um, it's not the window is actually not closed, so I, I, this video might you know potentially change. But you know, in terms of the players at uh, midfield that Liverpool have signed, you know, I think I was asked this question by by the lads in the group about you know is this an upgrade and stuff like that. We're gonna get into the transfer. I'm gonna do like my transfer roundup for Liverpool um, and across the Premier League anyway, um, and we'll get into that. Um, so you guys are gonna have to wait for that um, in regards to that. But you know, seeing someone like Gravenberch come in. You know, playing in that central midfield position, is that the position that we see him, you know, playing um, for Liverpool for? Is, is that, you know, where people are thinking he'll, you know, come in and slot? I've heard people obviously mention and I've seen quite a lot of people talking about him potentially going in that, um, would we say, double pivot position? You know, is that an area, you know, where we would like to, you know, potentially see him in? You know, I've put McAllister here for the time being. I, I'd like, if I had to pick like a Liverpool midfield, it wouldn't consist of Endo, no disrespect, but he'd be a benchman at the bare minimum kind of thing. And even then, I'm still thinking, eh, I don't really know. I'd probably even rather Curtis Jones. But either way, I've put him here. If you guys want to swap him out, I don't really care. Swap him out, put him in, put anyone that you want in. But obviously, I put Ryan Gavin, but just to kind of show you in terms of where he might obviously slot. You know, Liverpool obviously is moving to that kind of, if I move all of these players up as we do. This usually happens. Obviously, we've got this one here. Then this one decides that he wants to come in here. He gets shuffled across. And then he's usually up in this position. But this guy a little bit out wide. And then those two are usually together. Sometimes he goes a little bit out wide. So now you've ended up got this. If I move the goalkeeper, he usually comes up like that. And then Liverpool are usually lining up in this kind of formation more often than not. Where we've got the two centre-backs. Trent usually comes in, plays in that position. Robertson plays left midfield, you know, is usually over there. Tabozalai will kind of lurk in these kind of positions, you know, in and around, you know, just like that. So more often than not, you'll see Trent potentially ending up in this position here as well. You know, I've seen him do that quite a couple of times this season, but mainly, you know, he'll be moving into here. And then you've got Ryan Gravenberch there as well, who can, as Klopp has mentioned, he can do that box-to-box -box role. Do you know what I mean? He can play in that box-to-box -box kind of position. So he'll be kind of doing this quite a lot. But I'm very, again, I'm very, very intrigued, you know, in regards to how all of this fits, you know, because it's like I look at the I look at the team um, and I look at the, you know, the Liverpool midfield in terms of the players that we've signed individually. I think they are very, very decent players. Do I think that they are? Do I think they suit Liverpool? No, I, 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 I'd be lying if I came on here and told you guys that like, oh, yeah, I think, yeah, these are perfect fit for Liverpool. I don't think so at all. Um, I think the type of footballers that these guys are, what's most likely going to happen, which we're seeing with Zabozalai at this moment in time, is we're going to see a different Zabozalai than the one that we saw um, at RB Leipzig. The one that we all thought we were going to get and the one that we all wanted to actually see before we started doing Octopium, um, we're now going to see a bit more of a withdrawn one, you know, because he's quite industrial. He's very, very fit. He's effectively the Henderson, you know, in, you know, in this kind of team. And then you've got McAllister, who I feel like he's the one, yeah. It was going to be tricky with him because, you know, I, I feel like unless things obviously just get better, which I hope they do, but unless things just get better, I, I feel like where does he go? You know what I mean? Like, where do you play now? Because, I'm, like, unless you're going to, unless Endo can obviously slot into this position here and then he can just go obviously into that left midfield, uh, left central midfield position, then cool. Um, and then Ryan Gravenberch can just be like an option. Again, a decent option to have. Well, the Ryan Gravenberch of 21-22 season is a decent option, obviously, you know, to have. Hopefully, he can bring that form back into back into it. But he's going to have to work his way back into the team. Um, so, it's, again, it's just going to be interesting to see how this Liverpool midfield, you know, kind of works itself out. I think that is the key for me um, more than anything. Like I've stated a hundred times, man. Like I say, the individual players that we've signed, bar endo, I like. I like Zabozalai like the most. 
Um, McAllister, very good at Brighton. Um, and Gravenberch used to be good. So hopefully he can. we're just going to see that same Gravenberch, obviously, when he comes back in. How they get used, I don't know. You know, of course, again, like I mentioned, the window is not closed and I'm not even looking at my phone because I don't even want to see. You know, I mean, I'm just going to go on the premise that Liverpool do not sign anybody else and we just signed four midfielders and we're just going to leave it, you know, at that. And that's the job that Klopp wanted to do, you know, throughout the summer. And again, if that's the case, then, hey, this is the midfield, you know. Um, no, would I say defensively we're sorted? Not really. But I don't, I also think as well, not even to put it onto the players, I also think that that's not necessarily on the players, though. Yeah, you know I mean, I don't feel like we should. I should be looking at, you know, Gravenberch or McAllister or also Bozzolai and being like, oh my goodness, you guys need to play this kind of defensive role or even an endo. Like, the tactics need to change from the manager. You know, until that happens, Liverpool will still concede goals. Liverpool played three games and conceded in every single game and we're conceding quite a lot of chances in every single game. We've got Zabozola and McAllister in there. Nothing has changed. The team, to me, is playing more or less the same way. You know what I mean? We look at it nicer on the ball, you know, because we've got McAllister, because we've got Zabozola, but are we any much different from last season? Nah, not really. Not really. I'm still seeing players bypassing our midfield. We had Fabinho in there and Henderson in there and that was happening. I'm still seeing it happening. You know, so again, is it the players? Uh, like, you know, at some point, are we looking at the players? Is it the, the the coaching? Is it the tactics? Is it... That's all I really care about, you know, when it comes to something like a Gravenberch. And I think that's why, maybe not now, maybe by now, by the time this video comes out, people are warm to the idea and stuff like that. But I think that's why there was so much like, oh, Gravenberch kind of thing, you know. And he, again, decent. Well, he was decent. You know what I mean? I can't really speak to his last season because I don't know what he's going to turn out to be today. Do you know what I mean? I think that would be a bit presumptuous of me if I started saying, oh, yeah, I think he's going to be sick. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's just like Ansu Fati going to Brighton. I ain't got a clue. The Ansu Fati I knew, yo, that's probably the one of the top three signings of this entire window. That might not be the Ansu Fati that comes to, you know, to the Premier League. So, you know, it, it, it's tricky. And Ryan Gavimurch can fall into that same category, same category. Could be one of the best signings that that uh, uh, that is made, you know, throughout this summer. But ultimately, we don't know until he actually gets here and see how he fits in. Can he play that crop pressing game? Can he do all of this? We know what he can do on the ball. You guys have watched, I don't know how many streams, how many videos of people talking about it. I've done my own one. We know what he can do on the ball. We know, um, you know, how decent he actually is, you know, in certain situations. Is all of that going to help him for Liverpool? That's the question I ask everybody to think about that. Not Stop thinking so much about the player that you remember at Ajax. As we've seen with Liverpool, that's not usually what happens. We don't seem to get that player that we signed from a club and use them in that same way. We've seen it with Zabozalai already this season. We've seen it with McAllister already this season. You know, we've seen it with Thiago when he first came here. We've seen it with quite a lot of players, you know, Gapo, you know, coming in. You know, we've seen it with so many different players. I want people to not think of the player that that is that was at these football clubs. Don't do that because then you, you're just going to get mad at certain things for no reason. Think about all the qualities that they do have. How does that work here in Jurgen Klopp's team? How does that work for whatever Klopp is on, you know, the, the staff are trying to do moving forward? And then obviously, you know, we'll, we'll see and then we, we can kind of take it from there. But um, yeah, I'll give you guys obviously my transfer roundup, you know, with my ratings for the transfer window. Um, at the time of this video, as I mentioned, um, me recording this um, real quick. And um, yeah, the, the, the window is not closed yet. So I don't know what's going to happen by the time I post this video out. I'm still going to post it out. Um, and then obviously next week, we'll have a little look at, you know, the the whole transfer window in a, in a general sense, probably try and get some of the lads on. And then we can just have a conversation about how people felt the transfer window went. You guys, the viewers, hopefully you guys can obviously let me know as well. How do you guys think, you know, the transfer window kind of went? And I think it should be a really, really interesting conversation. But ultimately, Liverpool have signed Ryan Gravenberch, decent, decent player. Let's hope he can come here, rediscover that form, you know, that he had playing for Ajax just before he moved to Bayern Munich. And then we've got a real player, you know, on our hands. But guys, we reached the end of the video. Make sure you smash that like button. Thank you for everybody or anybody who stayed to the end of the video to watch all of this. Please, please, please make sure you hit that um, like button. Make sure you share. Make sure you subscribe. <sighs> we outie people. <laughs>